Hello! I am doing a vlog because we have gone all the way to Bendigo. Pretty much just for the woolen mills. So we had booked this trip like way back in July or June and we had to cancel it because COVID hit. And so we have finally, come December, six months later, been able to get here. So previously, if I haven't already put it in, or if I'm putting this in first, we're now in Bendigo, but we went through Kyneton and picked up a few little bits and pieces at a very cute little shop there and had breakfast in Gisborne and, um, <laughs> And now we are here at the woolen mills. So I will take you on our little yarny, crafty adventure and maybe show you the things that we pick up. We have plans to visit some farms tomorrow as well. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to film in each place, but we are staying at a place, so it might just be sort of footage of us making stuff and whatnot. But yeah, I'm super excited, so let's just jump on in. We have made it to our lovely accommodation. I didn't film a ton of the like interiors of the spaces, but I will go through and show you all the stuff that we got at all of our local yarn shops, our local yarn shops, and our like the Bendigo Woolen Mills, which has this huge room at the back that you can go into where it's like seconds that aren't heavy enough or like don't meet the weight minimums for balls of yarn with them. And they do like these huge, like 200 meter or 200 gram balls for a pretty inexpensive price. It was such a good day. We hit up, so we started the day, drove from Melbourne up to Gisborne where we had breakfast at Three Little Pigs, then went on from there to Kyneton and we stopped in uh, Alice in Fabric Land, I think it's called. Oh my God, that was so cute. <laughs> It has all of these gorgeous quilts hanging on the walls and like beautiful, like beautiful fabric ranges and then wool, which is definitely what I got there. Then we went straight from there, from Kyneton up to Bendigo, went to the mills, had dinner at Percy Pig, went into the Vinnies as well, 
and I think I picked up a, like a top and a little romper or something like that from the second hand shop. And then we went down to Castle Maine where we briefly stopped at the mills, which is like this bazaar of all of these really cute, like some crafty, some vintage uh, stalls, which was just excellent. And we sort of only had about half an hour to 45 minutes there, but it was so cute. And we found these like really cute little like girl gang, crafty girl gang patches. <laughs> so we all got them. Um, and then we came here and stopped off and getting pizza in Bacchus Marsh. It's about 7.30ish now. Um, but I'll take you on like a little bit of a view of the gardens, which I'll put that footage in here now. Good morning! Uh, it is the next day. We've gotten a little bit of a late start and we spent the morning sort of knitting and just relaxing and recovering. And then we are now off to one of the farms. I think we're only gonna be able to hit up one before we need to head back to Melbourne, but we're gonna go off to one of the farms. So I'm very excited and I will hopefully get some footage of that and otherwise probably see you back at home.
hill right here. Unexpected land. So I, the oh. one at the back, she's only a lamb herself. She's only last year's lamb, and she's had that lamb. You know oh. that? Little one, here's a good example of a fin, yeah, um, with no horns at all. The luster in it too. It that's, it. So that's not just the lanolin. No, no, no. Oh, that's a real gosh. shine. Mm -hmm. That's sort of what fin has that a lot of others don't have. That luster. Looks, um, so then I divide it in half, bag mm -hmm. this side, and that side, and any other little scraps mm -hmm. go into the processing. So nothing sort of. This one, I don't like it, but it's for commercial crossbred. Mm -hmm. And we that one was judged last year. We won that. We've won that one several times. But um, our black ones weren't judged last year. So. Mm -hmm. But these are the shoes, fleece. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, 
beautiful. That's great. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Stunning. Fantastic. Yeah. And it's got a nice, it's got a good staple. It's yeah. even. Would, it's would that soft. have come off a sheet that was like any? back in Melbourne it is the next day and I thought I would take you through what I picked up this was absolutely a very indulgent trip not at all indicative of usual yarn habits or anything like that we're all sort of transitioning more to try to support local yarn shops and local dyers and and make sure that that industry sort of gains our support um, I'm not gonna take you through the secondhand shops only because I have just washed the clothing items that I got there. It was just like a one of those classic little long sleeve tops with like the lettuce frill neck thing and just a little romper. I'm sure you'll see me wear them on camera as well. Right, so in the first place we went to Alice in Fabric Land where I did not buy fabric because I already had so much fabric and I know it's going to take me a little while to burn through my stash at the moment. But I did, in terms of sewing, get this little lace zip here. I don't know exactly what I'm going to use it for. Based on the size of it, it will probably be a skirt or a bag maybe. I did think it could make a cute topping to a dice bag. But I did pick up some wool. They had the most gorgeous socks on display in this wool. So I got this and this to be like the toe, the heel, and maybe also the cuff. I also grabbed this one from the same yarn brand because I was just I, I was just a little obsessed here. I'll show it this way. I think this will end up being a variegated yarn, so I was kind of hoping it was going to be stripes, but I don't think based on this. I don't think the repeats are long enough, so it will end up being a little bit stripy, but I'm okay with that because I think it will make cute socks still. This was very much a lace weight and a uh, like fingering weight trip. I also got this, which is a beautiful like apricot kind of color. I normally can't do very warm colors, but this is just that very specific shade that kind of suits me. It's almost like that 1930s tea rose lingerie shade. <laughs> Very specific. So the interesting thing about this one and this one, uh, this one is 60% merino, 5% silk, and 35% yak. And this one is 50 yak and 50 silk. And I don't know why, but I've just been really kind of into yak and like looking at those more obscure, kind of broadening my horizons, I guess, in terms of fiber, both with breeds of sheep and with things like the other wools, um, or exotic wools, I think they're technically called in labeling here, where it's like yak camel, um, and then the more traditional ones that you see where it's mohair and um, angora kind of stuff, angora goat. So this was the little, the first little haul from uh, from the local yarn shop in Kyneton. So then we went to Bendigo Woolen Mills, and I picked up this, which is an alpaca yarn. It's so gorgeous. I've got six balls of this. They were only like six dollars for a ball, so it was <laughs> great pricing up in that back room. Speaking of purples, I also picked up three of these four hundred meter 200 gram balls of wool and these are just a hundred percent wool these are pretty classic this is from their uh, rustic line which gives a really beautiful kind of heathered color and this is bellflower if you're at all interested I don't know if they ship internationally but they're great value I think these are like fourteen dollars for a big Big old ball. This is all in AUD, by the way, so it's even cheaper if it's USD, but I don't 
remember what the conversion is. Anyway, so I picked up three of these and I was thinking of making a Love Witch jumper with them because I'm currently knitting one in black linen cotton. It's taking me a while, mostly because I'm just not used to knitting with linen cotton and so I'm slightly weirded out by the texture, but I did get some good headway on that. So I've started the yoke of that and I'm working on that one. But I initially thought of it with this. I do also have one ball of this in my stash, so I haven't compared the lots or anything like that, but the dye lots. But I've got that ready to go should I desire to do it in probably late summer, autumn. Then I got three different balls of sock yarn. <laughs> Uh, this is the Bloom colorway, which gives a really beautiful kind of fade. So I picked up one, which is, I don't think these are on their website either, because this was in their back room. They do have it in 8-ply, and this was the Blue Jeans colorway, this one. I also got Blueberry Blush, which has a beautiful kind of blue and purple shift to it, or shade change to it that will make socks as well. And then Pastel Dream. And they're super soft, and these are wool nylon, uh, 70 wool, 30 nylon, so. Within the little group that went with us, which is my sort of fiber friends, we all kind of have our like distinctive color palettes in terms of what we like to knit and crochet with and the wool that we like to work with. So we decided to do a big like Secret Santa yarn swap. I got gifted these stunning white marble mohair silk uh, lace weight skeins. And I just, oh my God, they're so soft and they're so pretty. And that concluded our first day. So then the second day, which was Sunday, we went to the farm and she uh, hand dyes her own, the wool that's there, she and one of her friends. And she does seem to sell some of the fleeces to specific people, but she does a lot of hand dyeing. So she had all of these beautifully naturally dyed wools as well, which was gorgeous. So she uses various eucalypts and like indigos and things like that. So she's got all of these beautiful natural dyes on her Finn's wool. And sometimes they're blended with things, but I think all the ones that I got are Finn's wool. These were the two fingering weight skeins that I got. This first blue one is indigo and it's a big 200 gram ball as well, so it will be nice, and it's about 660-ish meters of wool. I also got this beautiful pink skein here, which is cochineal, and this is just 100 grams, so it's about 334 meters of fingering weight yarn. Then I bought two skeins of lace weight yarn and the pink one again oh no this one is indigo and alkanet and this is a big 200 gram ball of two ply yarn then i also got this which is a little 100 gram ball and this one is logwood and cochineal but that is it so this was the first sort of vlog. I really like this format and I think it works particularly well for something like this where I'm doing something um, either over a few days or at the on the same day and I can kind of share what's going on and share the information that I get from you, uh, get from the place. Because like that farm that we went to has Finn's sheep and they're one of five flocks within Australia and I think she said that they were the only colored Finn's flock so that was really cool to sort of find out about that and get to be taken through the farm and then sit down and have a cup of tea. It was so, so lovely. And that was uh, Fairfield Finns, if you are interested in checking them out. I do know that they did put up their website and I will probably leave any, any information about any of the stores that I went to or any of the places that we went to um, 
in the description below if you're ever coming to Australia and taking a little tour of regional Victoria. It was all about two hours outside of Melbourne. Ben uh, the drive from Melbourne to Bendigo is about two hours. So it was sort of stopping off everywhere. And I think our biggest stretch was going from Castlemaine to our accommodation near Bacchus Marsh. So that's it. If you like this video, please feel free to check out my other videos. And if you really like this video, you can feel free to subscribe. I am attempting to do extra videos aside from the one weekly video that I usually try and put up. So you can hit the notification bell if you want to find out when all of those are. I hope you have a lovely week. Bye!